Welcome to St. Mary's Church of Holy Trinity Parish. We begin our Mass with the opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. I'd like to welcome everyone as we gather for Mass, to welcome any visitors who are with us, and those joining us through the media. Dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true. Grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. reading from the book of Sirach. 
If you choose, you can keep the commandments. They will save you. If you trust in God, you too shall live. He has set before you fire and water. To whichever you choose, stretch forth your hand. Before man are life and death, good and evil. Whichever he chooses shall be given him. Immense is the wisdom of the Lord. He is mighty in power and all seeing. The eyes of God are on those who fear him. He understands man's every deed. No one does he command to act unjustly. To none does he give license to sin. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we speak a wisdom to those who are mature, not a wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are passing away. Rather, we speak God's wisdom, mysterious, hidden, which God predetermined before the ages for our glory, and which none of the rulers of this age knew. For if they had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what eye has not seen and ear has not heard, and what has not entered the human heart, what God has prepared for those who love him, this God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit scrutinizes everything, even the depths of God. The word of the Lord.
be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish it, but to fulfill. Amen. I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, will be answerable to the Sanhedrin. And whoever says, you fool, will be liable to fiery Gehenna. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there recall what your brother has done against you, leave your gift there at the altar, go first, and be reconciled with your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Settle with your opponent quickly while on the way to court. Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge, and the judge will hand you over to the guard, and you will be thrown in prison. Amen. I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body thrown into Guyana. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body go into Guyana. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife must give her a bill of divorce. But I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to your ancestors, do not take a false oath, but make good to the Lord on all that you do. But I say to you, do not swear at all, not by heaven, not by God's throne, not by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Do not swear by your head, for you cannot make a single hair white or black. Let your yes mean yes, and your no mean no. Anything more is from the evil. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, dear friends, we continue this evening to hear our Lord's Sermon on the Mount, as it's called. Do you remember, two weeks ago, we heard the Beatitudes, those 
eight guides to how to live. How did you get on with that list, by the way? It's worth going back to it again. And last week our Lord gave us in that sermon two visuals, really, of how to live, how we are to be, like light or like salt. But now this week our Lord, if I dare say, changes gear slightly. He speaks of very practical matters, things I'd like to suggest that we encounter in our daily lives pretty much every day. And he tells us how to deal with these as Christians, as his disciples. There were so many examples that Deacon Rick read for us, it's hard to remember them all. How we should speak to others, especially if they insult us. How to deal with anger. How to deal with falling out with someone. How to manage our desires and that danger of lust, of treating others as objects and how to keep our promises, our, our word. It's a pretty comprehensive list, isn't it? And as I said, we're likely to deal with at least one of those things every day. Perhaps even on the way to Mass, you had to deal with something like anger as some wretch cut you up as driving here. I'm sure you dealt with it extremely well. Well, there's such a list, it's really hard to know, isn't it, where to begin? So I'd like to just unpack one of those things that our Lord gives us to guide us and help us in those daily struggles. We can't go through them all, so I'd like to reflect on that thing about anger. Why? Because I have to tell you, people tell me this all the time, that they're suffering from anger, and it is a root sin isn't it? A fundamental one. And you know, I have this theory, I don't whether you agree, that we talk about long COVID, but to me a sign of long COVID, there seems to be a tremendous anger everywhere in our culture. So our Lord's words are very timely, and we remember them. So let's look at a spiritual approach to anger. Well, first of all, I think we need to be clear that we all experience anger. It's a basic human emotion and reaction. And moral theologians tell us it's, it's neither good nor bad in itself, because it is that reaction. It's just a natural resistance and reaction to an offense or an injustice. For example, we have righteous anger, don't we? In the scriptures, it's called zeal that motivates and seeks to correct something that's wrong or an offense, not to overreact, but to seek justice. That's righteous anger against injustice, evil, sin, wrongdoing. And we see that, don't we? Think of our Lord himself when he overturns the tables of the money changers in the temple. We may not like it, but our Lord is angry about this, turning his father's house into a marketplace. Or when people have that hardness of heart, our Lord is both sorrowful and angry about it. They could have so much more if only that shell was pierced and they let God's love in. But what about us? We, I think, have righteous anger. We think of the war in U the Ukraine. The first anniversary is coming up very soon. That monstrous action of some power-crazed person causing untold suffering and injury. It is evil. It is wrong. And we are angry about it. Or when we see racism or inequality. So we notice that anger is a reaction to an event, a happening. And it's sporadic. We react to that event, and it's natural, and it needs to play itself out, otherwise it festers. But, there's always a but, isn't there? The problem comes when anger is no longer something that's righteous, or when it's just an occasional reaction to some particular event or happening, when it becomes instead something deep-seated, a disposition. 
We go from being angry occasionally to becoming an angry person. And we all know such people. It's written clearly in their face. It's like a veneer of calm, but underneath everything is seething. It reminds me when I went to the National Park in Yellowstone, we were told again and again, do not go off the boardwalk. It looked like solid ground, but it was just a thin crust. And underneath there was boiling mud and ash and whatever else. No, it can be a veneer. That's a problem. And our Lord clearly warns us about this, about becoming an angry person, because it is deadly. It is like the worm in the fruit working its way out. And then our Lord speaks of sinful anger. In the Bible we would call it wrath, of course, wrath. An irrational, an irrational reaction to perceived offences. And this type of anger gives itself away, doesn't it? Not by the desire not to correct, but rather to injure the offender, to seek vengeance lashing out verbally or physically. It also gives itself away because it's often out of proportion, way out of proportion. It's excessive and reckless. And digging deeper, we see the motive in this kind of sinful anger is not really to correct an injustice, but rather comes from elsewhere. Maybe our pride has been hurt, <clears> or <throat> we're bitter, or impatient, or we want to control somebody and now we're frustrated because guess what, they won't be controlled. And our Lord warns us of this in the Gospel. And notice how Jesus links this anger with the Ten Commandments, particularly number six, which is, thou shalt not kill. Because there's more than one way to kill somebody, literally of course, but we can kill a person's reputation their character, or whatever else. And so that's why our Lord forbids using angry words like fool, or the word raka, we actually have the original word, it really means blockhead, or we'd say in good old Anglo-Saxon English, numbskull, or something along those lines. And why? Because those words lead to actions, and finally to habits and dispositions. It's a very short step from calling someone a fool to seeing everybody as a fool. I'm surrounded by idiots or something along those lines. It's so dangerous because those words become who we are. In fact, Jesus says all this sinful anger leads a person to this place called Gehenna. What, what's that? It's really a non-place, a wilderness, both now and in eternity. Or as he said, it's like a debtor's prison. We're trapped, held prisoner by anger, and we cannot move on. It is like being in a prison. I remember a dear priest friend who showed me this letter that had been written by a bishop who had long since passed away. Now this letter by now was a bit yellow around the edges and creased, and he'd kept that letter for 35 years because it had been critical of him, unfairly, admittedly. That's been held prisoner by anger. It is so dangerous. So, what is the remedy? The answer may surprise us, and our Lord gives it to us in that Sermon on the Mount. It is meekness. Remember the Beatitude. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Not Gehenna, but the earth the earth now and in the future. Because this attitude of meekness helps us first to be honest about the cause of our anger. Why am I angry? Is it just? What is really fueling it? Is it because of my pride or jealousy or envy or resentment or bitterness? Or is it because of fear? I have this theory that what is fueling so much of this post-pandemic Anger is actually fear. And our Lord gives us the antidote to that. Thanks be to God. And once we've done this, once we've seen what's fueling the anger, we can channel that anger in the right way. 
We can't just suppress it because it'll always be there, bubbling away underneath. No, our Lord asks us to deal with it, to find a way forward that is just and fair and in proportion, and one that is healing for us and hopefully for the person who's offended us. So, dear friends, just a reflection on one of those things our Lord's given, given us tonight. If you do have time, look at the other things again. It's chapter 5 of St. Matthew's Gospel. We cannot help experiencing anger, but we can help how we deal with it. Or rather, God can help us in how we deal with it. Let us give thanks for God's love and mercy, who shows us the way forward, so that we indeed may inherit the earth and goodness and truth and peace. Together, let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things invisible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now offer our prayers and petitions to God. For Pope Francis and all bishops, that the Lord may grant them wisdom to lead us in his ways, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for local and national leaders, that God may guide them in working for peace and justice for all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all who suffer from the world's sins and injustices, that the Holy Spirit may surround and protect them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear For the sick and those who are suffering, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, they may be healed and raised up. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear For the faithful departed, especially those recently deceased, that God may bring them to eternal rest in heaven with all the angels and saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all for whom we offer this Mass, in particular for the deceased members of the Gerald and Kerr families, Thomas C. Quigley and Charles Scalera, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And we pause for a moment of quiet prayer to lay before our Lord any more personal prayers or petitions we'd like to offer at Mass today.
God, our Father, we ask you to hear our prayers. Fill us with your many gifts, so that we may love and serve you in all we say and in all we do. We ask this as all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us. 
and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chance, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. The Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who press us against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Offer one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. We now offer a prayer, joined as we are, in a spiritual communion with the Lord and also with our brothers and sisters in Christ, who cannot be with us at Mass today. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Once again, just to welcome everyone as we gather for Mass, um, we're only about ten days out now from Lent and Ash Wednesday, um, so just a number of things are, are coming up. Um, our uh, study series is going to look at Chosen. Uh, you'll see details of that in the bulletin. Uh, 40 Days for Life also begins, I believe, on the 22nd. Um, we also, of course, will have the usual fish <coughs> fries on a Friday, and I believe tickets are now available for that. Um, and also for the Shrove Tuesday um, pancakes and dinner, um, again, details of all those in the bulletin. And then on Thursday, the 23rd, just to give you a heads up, um, the Knights of Columbus are sponsoring a blood drive, and that'll be down at the Academy. Um, also, plenty of opportunity for reconciliation coming up. We'll have the 24 hours again, so please do spread the word. Uh, that'll take place on the 31st of March into the 1st of April. And for our dear young adults, uh, can confirm that we will have that evening. That will also be Friday, the 31st of March. So again, please do spread the word uh, for our young adult group. And that will be Stations of the Cross. Also the opportunity for reconciliation and then a service afterwards. And the bishop will also be here. Just to thank everyone for the diocesan appeal. I think we're about 80%, 80 of our targets, so many thanks for that, and please, if you can help uh, with that, always appreciated. And today is the uh, feast day, of, in case you hadn't guessed, of Our Lady of Lourdes, with a number of beautiful Marian uh, hymns, uh, but please do keep in your prayers the sick, of course, uh, but also those who care for them, those in the medical profession, uh, caring professions, and so many families also who care uh, for their loved ones um, at, all the time. So a special day of prayer. And the last thing I've been asked to mention, I know, I think you were asked as you came in, uh, we had some issues with our photocopier. Um, so if you can return the uh, worship aid for Mass tomorrow, that would be appreciated. I'm not sure, Michael, whether we got angry with a photocopier. Um, I felt like offering an exorcism over it, but um, anyway, if you can help out uh, for folks coming to Mass tomorrow, that'll be much appreciated. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, proclaiming the gospel through your lives. Thanks be to God. And we say the prayer to St. Michael on the last page of our Red Mass booklet. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruined souls. Amen. 